Hey, Facebook, how's everybody doing today? <clears throat> Happy Saturday. I'm over here with my little Yeti mug that got scraped up when I dropped it off the roof of the car. I put it on the car and then I drove away and it fell off. But this thing's a trooper. Went into Dash this morning, got filled up. So we're drinking good coffee today. I just wanted to take a minute and kind of give everybody an update. Uh, people have been asking about the Rainbow Road project and kind of how that's going. Everybody saw that the one house <clears throat> on the end of the street had been painted, but that the rest of them are still white. And everybody's kind of asking, like, what's the plan? What's going on? So this is roses is, are red because it's going to be a red house and those are rose bushes, although we don't know what color the roses bloom. But uh, yeah, basically, as it stands, we've been remodeling the inside. And so I'm going to give you guys or you folks a uh, sneak peek of that. And then we're hoping that calendar year 2023, we can get these two remodeled and finished up on the inside. And then we can start going through and peeling off the siding <clears throat> and uh, painting the outsides of them. This is kind of challenging because these houses are, have, were so rotten on the inside that it was really, 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 really hard just to even get them remodeled and fixed up. And we are really worried, and there's a lot of indications that underneath the siding, you can kind of see around the windows, um, the way that they put the siding, that this is going to be a big can of worms. And so we just want to make sure that when we do open up this can of worms, that we are ready and able to do all the things that uh, come with getting this fixed up. Because from experience, there's nothing worse than opening a can of worms that you were not ready to open. So we got the inside uh, really cute. And I think that y'all are going to really be excited about that but uh the exterior is uh still coming so so this is 950 m street and like i said the name of this one is roses are red of course the schlag keypad locks so this one was kind of fun because it already had um the higher ceilings and it already had this beam in place that kind of broke up the room so then we were like, okay, how can we incorporate this beam and how can we incorporate some of these wood touches that were original when we got it? Because you can't really tell now, but the walls were just absolutely trashed. This wall had had a, a collage of pictures and so there was probably 100 or 200 little nails poking into this wall when we got the place, which was really, really, really challenging um, just to fix up all of that damage. So as it stands, we've got kind of a living, a living dining here. And it's a little bit unfortunate uh, that we couldn't do hard surface here, but you can kind of see there's a little bit of a hump in the floor. That's because whenever this house was fixed up after the flood, they'd put a beam here and that beam, they jacked it up a little bit too much. And so then that put this weird hump in the center of the floor, which was unfortunate and stupid. So what we've got here is bedroom number one. So main floor bedroom, it's got these nice built-ins, big closet, ceiling fan, tall ceilings. We're gonna call this bathroom number one. I think this one looked turned out really cute because this house has a lot going on as far as mixed metals. We've got definitely some of the blacks and the whites, but we've also got some of the, some of the golds and the silvers, just a very eclectic house and really trying to kind of lean into that. So bedroom number one. And then I think this is going to be the big exciting reveal, but this is the kitchen. Check this out. <clears throat> Got this Moroccan mosaic tile, which I think is just super, super cool texture wise. And then you've got the exposed face with the glass into the doors of the, uh, the cabinets. We were able to keep this like arch that goes over the sink, which I think is really cool. And uh, definitely the clean white with the butcher block top and the black fixtures. Again, all the appliances are nice and shiny and new, which is exciting for everybody. A little bit of a weird layout for a kitchen because it's got one, two, three, four doors in the kitchen. Uh, so it's really challenging to find something that like actually made sense and worked out here. And then off the kitchen, you have kind of a back mudroom slash laundry. So this goes out to the back door, mudroom, laundry. And then this is actually the color combo. Let's see if we can see it. So this is the color combo that we're going to do for the main house where it's the red and the purple accented. So the house will be red 
with then purple as the accent color. And the reason why we painted the garage first is because the garage was already peeling and chipping. And so we needed to do something with it regardless, whereas the house has vinyl siding. And so if the house has vinyl siding, it technically per the city is allowed to stay as it is, whereas the garage had to be painted per the city code, per the city rental housing rules. So we had to paint the garage as part of like phase one, but we don't have to paint the house as part of phase one. And so that's kind of where we're at is we're trying to basically spend the money on the interior, get everything fixed up so that the interior is good and solid. And then phase two will focus on the exterior. So again, super cool kitchen, awesome backsplash, cool cabinets, mixed metals, lots of texture. And then this house was a duplex at one point, but after or before we bought it, they turned it back to a single family. And so this actually was built on as an entrance to the upstairs, which was um, the second apartment. So kind of a weird deal there. But uh, yeah, the previous owner had converted this into a pantry. And I think that it does good for that. It's just a little bit weird with the stairs. So coming upstairs, we have kind of this uh, nice big landing here. And then you've kind of got the nook for storage there. And again, this is this is a floor plan that, you know, I mean, we, this is what we, we found when we got it. So we just had to work with it. And so again, this is that, um, at the last house, we also did this like herringbone, uh, kind of like white subway tile, uh, had Mark Richard do this, turned out absolutely gorgeous. And it was really good because then you can see how challenging it was to basically make this, this curve work. And so Mark is a master of his craft and he was able to pull it off, but not, I'm sure not easily and not without consequences. And so again, this is just a oversized bathroom space for storage here, which I think makes it a lot healthier. This place is way bigger than it needs to be for a three bedroom, two bath. And I just didn't know what to do with it. So I'll show you these bedrooms, but it's kind of a weird deal. Um, and it makes more sense if it would have been a duplex, but it had already been rezoned by the city. And so I didn't want to fight them in that way because who wants to fight with the city all day? But what we've got here is two bedrooms. So here's a door and here's a door. But we have two bedrooms that are actually double rooms. So you have to walk through this room to get to this room. So then the question is, okay, well, what do we do with that? So what we decided to do is make this whole thing a bedroom. And so people can either put their bed here and use this as like a study or a closet, or they can put their bed here and use that as a study or a closet. So basically you have this as a double, this, this whole thing then is one bedroom. And then it's actually the same over here where you've got a hundred year old built in, and then you've got this double room again. So this whole thing, this room and that room are all a bedroom. So this is technically a three bedroom, two bathroom house, but it's really, really oversized because you have basically these two additional rooms on the second floor that we otherwise did not know what to do with. And it would have been possible again to spend even more money um, and try to like, I don't know, mash something in here. But the, the floor plans on this house were really, 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 really challenging. And I think that we did the best that we could on a budget, which hopefully y'all um, like that or i don't know hopefully it hits you know what i mean but uh yeah it was really challenging to do this one without kind of going crazy and um and overspending just because of the way that this house had been just like cobbled together so much over the years so i don't know fingers crossed but yeah so for everybody joining late this is uh the rainbow road uh development and this is this house is roses are red it still has white vinyl siding on the exterior uh, because we've been working on the interior first and then we'll do the exterior as like a phase two. And so what we're doing is we're doing the kind of the walkthrough, let everybody see what, what's going on. This is a really, really eclectic house, very eclectic floor plan, uh, very eclectic history, a lot of like mixed metals, mixed textures. So we'll do, we'll do, the, we'll do the whole walkthrough coming, starting from the second floor. So right now we're in the second floor and we're in one of the bedrooms and this is a double room, but that's the door. And so this whole thing is one bedroom. So this can be used as a, as a closet. That could be the bedroom or vice versa. That could be the closet. This could be the bedroom, a study, whatever you want it to be. 
ceiling fans. Again, the textures. This then is bedroom number two. And again, this is a double room. So this is just a doorway, but there's no door on it. And so this is the door to this bedroom. And again, whoever gets this place uh, is really gonna have uh, a lot of square footage to work with. This is kind of the landing on the second floor that goes down to the kitchen. We've got a full bathroom here with the really cool um, herringbone subway tile. So I think that was a lot of fun. Again, mixed metals, lots of texture, definitely leaning into the eclectic vibes. The garage had peeling and chipping paint. And so the city was gonna make us paint it uh, to get the rental inspection through. So this is the color scheme that will be on the main house where the main body of the house will be red with purple trim. And so that's kind of that roses are red um, vibe. And then the next one we're gonna work on is this one. <laughs> so going downstairs, follow me down. We've got a pantry here. And then check out this kitchen with the, with the uh, Moroccan mosaic tile, butcher block, texture, mixed metals, nice uh, Samsung appliances, brand new. Look at this. This butcher block turned out super, super well. Again, lots of texture going on, uh, but this is an eclectic neighborhood and this is an eclectic house. Uh, there's no reason, I think, for us to strip it down and make it plain Jane when uh, it doesn't want to be plain Jane. This house uh, definitely needs and warrants and deserves being uh, a really exciting, eclectic house. <clears throat> Brand new washer and dryer. And again, this is in the uh, first floor, so this is in that mudroom. So back door to the garage, uh, mudroom, coat closet, all the things. This then is kind of the big oversized like living or living dining. And again, it's got this like eclectic beam that we tried to maintain, uh, which was kind of challenging. But yeah, so it's got the beam, it's got the built in. And then this is that second bathroom. Sorry, I'm not trying to give you whiplash too bad. Second bathroom uh, on the main floor. So it's got everything that you need. Uh, again, eclectic mixed metals trying to bring everything together and draw everything in. And then this is bedroom number three. So this is main floor. Uh, it's got this built in. So it's a closet below within shelves above, which I think uh, turned out super cool. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Um, hopefully everybody uh, understands that, you know what I mean? We're not trying to jerk everybody around by not going full blast and painting the outsides of them. It's coming. We're working on it, I promise. This house was kind of a brutal remodel. It had a lot of just like rottenness that over the years we had to scrape away and get back down to, um, to a good like base to where we could kind of build it back up. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited for 2023 because I think that's gonna be the year where we can start doing some more of the exteriors. We can get the rest of them on this row, at least the interiors finished. So get people down here, which will be exciting. So it's not so much of a ghost town anymore. Uh, this is the Roses a Red House on the Rainbow Road uh, development. So it's the 900 block of M Street Southwest right off the interstate. And so everybody has seen that uh, the pink house on the on the end that you can see from 380. Um, and so this is this is another one. It's coming. But yeah, and if anybody, um, I, I don't know if this one's rented or not yet. I'd have to touch base with Sandy. But uh, if anybody knows of anybody looking for a place, uh, or anybody wants to be involved in this, if anybody lives in the neighborhood and wants to collaborate, we would love for more of the neighbors to be kind of a part of this transformation. I'm, my hope is that uh, it's not just one street that gets like the, the cool paint jobs and the, the exciting colors, but that this can be something that, uh, that the neighborhood can get into. And we've been working with the neighborhood association, having talks with them, but if anybody else lives down here, I would love to, I'd love to hear from you and, uh, and just be kind of part of the conversation. But yeah, so thanks so much, everybody. Thanks for coming along and uh, just be patient. We're getting to it. Uh, this one will be roses are red on the outside soon enough. I'll talk to you guys later.